My name is Dan Petit and I'll be your host today. Uh, welcome to the Key Public Library's third annual Poetry Out Loud competition. For those of you who don't know, Poetry Out Loud, a nationwide program of, of the National Endowment of the Arts in partnership with the Poetry Out Foundation, encourages you to learn about the beauty and power of language through memorization and performance of great poems. The program helps students master public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and learn about their literary heritage. Now in its seventh year, New Hampshire's Poetry Out Loud program is managed by the New Hampshire State Council on the Arts with the support of the New Hampshire Writers Project. Other partners include the Poetry Society of New Hampshire, the Art Alliance of Northern New Hampshire, and the Frost Place. Poetry Out Loud competitors memorize and recite poems from hundreds identified by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation that represent the breadth of great poetry. Participants are judged on the quality of their presentation, accuracy in reciting the poem, and its difficulty. In New Hampshire, local champions compete to represent their high school at regional competitions. Those winners participate in March's state championship, which once again will be held at the Representatives Hall at the State Council in Concord. Each state's champion then travels to Washington, D.C. for the national finals, where more than $50,000 in college scholarships and prizes are awarded to the top finishers. The champion and alternate champion of our competition will each receive a $15,000 merit-based scholarship to New England College should they choose to enroll at NEC. The champion will also advance to the regional competition, which takes place at, the, at New England College's great room, also known as the Science Center, in Henniker, New Hampshire, on Friday, March 9, 2012. And snow date is March 10, 2012, at 2 p.m. I would like to thank the King Public Library's Board of Trustees, the Friends of the King Public Library, Library Director Nancy Vincent, and Youth Department Director Gail Zachariah for making our local competition possible today. Now to introduce our judges. Our judges, um, if you could just please acknowledge the crowd when I, when I call your name. First we have Ms. Dawn Kotu. <laughs> Dawn is a poet and freelance copy editor working toward her MFA at New England College. She received her BA in creative writing from Chester College of New England. Dawn proofreads publications and otherwise works behind the scenes at the New Hampshire Writers Project. She leads a writers group based out of Concord and co-coordinates the Datum, Earth Reading Series, and Key. Her feature articles, interviews, and poems have appeared or are forthcoming in Ad Hoc Manadnock, An Ace Writer, So Good, Compass Rose, Scapegoat Review, The Henniker Review, The Tower Journal, Today, Big Lux, uh, Pictoire Machine, Greenline Press, and Amos Cat. Next we have Ms. Kathleen Fagley. Uh, Kathleen's chapbook, How You Came to Me, will be published by Finishing Line Press in June 2012. Her poems have appeared in literary magazines, memoir, and at Adana Literary Journal, Slim Screen, Poem Memoir Story, Cutthroat, Entelechi International, Comstock Review, Online, and Deep MQ Review, Houston Literary Review, and Anthologized in the 2010 Poets Guide to New Hampshire, More Places, More Poets, and The Best of Right Action 2010. She is the, po she is the poetry editor for MCAD, the Journal of Southern New Hampshire University, and recently edited poetry for a 2011 publication of Manadnock Writers Group, Shadow and Light, a literary anthology on mem memory. Her critical essay on Jean Valentine's work is included in the book of 25 essays to be published by the University of Michigan, Dean Valentine, This World Company, in June 2012. She recently judged the national contest um, in fall of 2011 for the Poetry Society of New Hampshire. Next we have Mr. Dan Nichols. Dan A. Nichols is a member of the Starving Artist Collective in downtown King, New Hampshire, where he acts as a writer in residence. He received a BA in philosophy and literature from at Ave Maria University in, in 2007. He has poetry forthcoming this April from Dead Mule. So those are our performance judges. Next we have the accuracy judge, Ms. Brandy McDonald. Brandy McDonald is a performance poet who represented 
Worcester, Mass. at the individual World Poetry Slam in 2010. In 2011, she was Worcester's Grand Slam champion and competed as a member of the Worcester's Poets Asylum Slam team at the National Poetry Slam. She represented the spoken element in the ongoing photography and poetry collaboration A Thousand Miles with Jessica Hosman and was contributing artist for Just Like a Girl, a manifesto. She lives in southern New Hampshire with her two children. Next we have our prophet, Miss Christina Giorgio. <laughs> Christina Giorgio was last year's Poetry Out Loud coordinator, and she's really excited to be able to participate as a prompter in this year's competition. When Christina's not working as an AmeriCorps VISTA leader, she's running or going on long hikes with her dog. <laughs> and that's our panel for this year. Thank you very much for it. So our contest will contest, consist of two rounds. There'll be a, a brief intermission between rounds and after the contest, contestants are finished. Um, we will take a few minutes to add the final score. Then the champion and alternate champion will be announced. Now before our first competitor goes on stage, I will recite a pair of calibration or warm-up poems for the judges to score. Okay. Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say ice. From what I've fire? tasted. Okay. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate. Fire. To say that. To say that. For destruction. To say that for destruction, ice is also great. Is also great, and would suffice. I too, by Langston Hughes. I too, sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well, and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am, and be ashamed. I, too, am America. No garden of mirth, 
or bower of bliss. The valley of forgiveness is lined with condominiums, and chainsaws are howling in the forest of despair. Here, on the table near the window, is a vase of peonies, and next to it, black binoculars and a money clip, exactly the kind of thing we now prefer objects that sit quietly on a line in lowercase, themselves and nothing more. A wheelbarrow, an empty mailbox, a razor blade resting in a glass ashtray. As for the others, the great ideas on horseback and the long-haired virtues in embroidered gowns looks as though they have traveled down that road you see on the final page of storybooks. The one that winds up a green hillside and disappears into an unseen valley where everyone must be fast asleep.
when the breath of when, when the breath of heaven would blow of a deep in my fear. The Destruction of Sennacherib by Lord Byron and George Gordon. The Assyrian came down like the wolf on the fold, and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold, and the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea, when the blue wave rolls nightly on deep Galilee. Like the leaves of the forest when summer is green, that hosts on the banners at sunset were seen. Like the leaves of the forest, when autumn hath blown, that host on the morrow lay withered and strown. Mine. For, the angel. For the angel of death spread his wings on the blast, and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed. And the eyes of the sleepers waxed deadly and chill, and their hearts but once heaved, and forever grew still. And there lay the steed, with his nostril all wide, but through it there rolled not the breath of his pride, and the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf, and cold as the spray of the rock-beating surf. And there lay the rider, distorted and pale, with the dew on his brow and the rust on his mail. And the tents were all silent, the banners alone, the lances unlifted, the trumpet unblown. And the widows of Asher are loud in their wail, and the idols are broke in the temple of Baal. And the might of the gentile, unsmote by the sword, hath melted like snow in the glance of the Lord. After working 60 hours, again for what reason? By Bob Hickok. <clears throat> the best job I had was moving a stone from one side of the road to the other. This required a permit, which required a bribe. The bribe took all my salary. Yet, because I hadn't finished the job, I had no salary, and to pay the bribe, I took a job moving the stone the other way. Because the official wanted his bribe, he gave me a permit for the second job. When I pointed out that the work would be best completed if I did nothing, he complimented my brain and wrote a letter to my employer suggesting promotion on stationery, bearing the wings of a raptor spread in flight over a mountain smaller than the bird. My boss, fearing my intelligence, paid me to sleep on the sofa and take lunch with the official, who required a bribe to keep anything from being done. When I told my parents, they wrote my brother to come home from university, to be slapped on the back of the head. Dutifully, he arrived and bowed to receive his instruction, at which point sense entered his body and he asked what I could do by way of a job. I pointed out there were stones everywhere trying not to move. <laughs> All it took was a little gumption to be the man who didn't move them. It was much harder to explain the intricacies of not obtaining a permit to not do this. Just yesterday, he got up at dawn, 
and shaved as if the lack of hair on his face has anything to do with the appearance of food on an empty table. Blow, blow, thou winter wind, by William Shakespeare. Blow, blow, thou winter wind, that are not so uncommon. As man's ingratitude, thy tooth is not so keen, because it is not seen. But thy breath be rude. Hi-ho, sing hi-ho, unto the green holly. Most friendship is fading, most loving your folly. Then I hoe the holly, whose life is most jolly. Freeze, freeze, thou better sky. Right? That does. That does not bite so nigh. Right? As benefits. As benefits forgot. Though thou waters ward 